news regarding streetwear stuff. Some good, 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 good news. So this is courtesy of WWD, the Louis Vuitton and Nike collaborations designed by Virgil Abloh on the Air Force One are due to come out soon. It feels like there's loads of, um, I've seen loads of leaks, not leaks, no, I've seen loads of people sharing pictures of their pairs. I've seen some leaks of people that obviously work in the sneak industry getting samples and showing them off too. And that's usually the standard sort of protocol for the drumming up and the, as we approach kind of the release date of the actual shoe itself. Um, now he basically seeds them to the people that matter, quote unquote. And then obviously all the sneaker heads get a pair or two, the news platforms and whatnot, and they share some pictures. And then little by little, they'll probably start to come out in some sort of GR way. Not really GR because I don't think you or I are going to be able to get a pair of these anytime soon, but still in terms of his legacy in terms of just being a great way to sort of i think punctuate some yeah some sort of punctuation of virgil's basically um stamp on sneaker history on sneaker culture in general and obviously his work is done with nike i think this is a great way to do it by bringing these two forces together and basically presenting in a shoe basically collaboration between virgil nike and louis vuitton um done in the best way possible really especially taking inspiration from all the bootleg stuff that people used to sell back in the day but to be honest when i got my first bootleg pair of designer air force ones it was i think via meteor sports and if i'm not mistaken meteor sports used to buy legit pair of air force ones and then they used to get legit the, the idea of the thinking was they'd get legit bags or fabric of gucci or louis and then cut the swoosh and then stick that over the actual swoosh itself sometimes they'll stick it other places would remove the actual swoosh to have a bit more flush and have the actual fabric swoosh placed on there but they were a standard thing that you would buy and sometimes of course you do the whole spray paint the air spray air paint is it how, how do you call that is this spray paint yeah i think that they do back in the day in hip-hop in the 80s and whatnot they do that stuff on there too i knew i remember wiley having a really sick pair of um, air force ones done that way that i remember seeing in meteor sports i think he he I think he either made them or they were made for him and they were presented in some sort of box. I remember seeing them there back in the day. And Meteor Sports, in case you're wondering, was this um, legendary sneaker store in Shepherd's Bush, if I'm not mistaken, or Labrador Grove, I forgot what the area was. Labrador Grove? Um, that used to sell basically one of the first kind of reselling spots before fakes arrived. Because I think now that there's so many fakes, a lot of these reselling spots just sell fakes. They don't really sell legit stuff. I'm pretty sure of it especially the ones around my area there's no way these guys have paris dunks and whatnot like come on let's be real so before fakes existed or before fakes were as good as they are now because fakes are basically one-on-one -on -one, most of them if you can get good ones but back in the day if you wanted to get you know limited edition shoes and you didn't mind paying the money you could either go to a place like slamming kicks in central london which was more catered around people that were in the know or you could go to hood spots like meteor sports and pick up bits and pieces and sometimes they wouldn't be that knowledgeable and they maybe price them a bit low i remember buying a pair of atmos air max ones from there um for really low like for maybe i don't know 200 pounds or something stupid and the reason why they were that cheap if i remember correctly one shoe was a display shoe so it was a bit more yellowed or discolored than the other shoe but still crazy bargains but yeah the legacy of this shoe or the inspiration from it is really really deep deep in his sneaker culture deep in history you could say maybe those louis vuitton things um with the gucci swooshes the louis vuitton print um whatever else they put so they put burberry all these sort of things they might have been maybe the first sort of custom shoes you know people now do a little custom sneaker designing and painting or stuff and changing panels to alligator skin that might have been some of the first forays into it i think so if i'm not mistaken obviously people did markers on there i know people back in the day used to swap the laces of their adidas superstars and put those really thick laces that the guys from run dmc used to wear or to remove the laces completely but for the most part in terms of really like cutting and pasting stuff and changing the way it looks those swooshes might have been some of the first forays into it and i remember her and preston actually did a really good um, project on that recently too with these shoes called the street sweeper which is a good little mix-up where he basically got an air force one mid and he took off the nike swoosh and then replaced it with a louis vuitton um babe star sort of uh, moniker on the side that you get on the babes of shoe which was quite cool so that was a good little mix-up a kind of an unofficial um collab hybrid thing which is interesting to see if they actually end up doing that in real life because they probably will much later on and it'll probably be horrible compared to what harem did but yeah continue exclusive louis vuitton and nike air force one by air Virgil and Blue sneaker to launch with an auction obviously because you know when it comes to releasing shoes especially limited edition shoes they always get given to the rich and famous first before they get given to UI. That's just standard protocol. It's annoying. It's frustrating. I still, I'm still annoyed the fact that we have to enter fucking raffles to win a chance to buy shoes. 
you know the, the whole i you know sneaker culture has basically changed the meaning of what a raffle is like i've said many times a raffle is when i've grown up especially when you go to a fun fair the whole point of a raffle is that you buy a ticket for a nominal fee and it gives you the chance to win something incredibly you know more expensive than what the raffle ticket was so if you bought a raffle ticket for a quid you might have the chance to win a football that might be 10 pounds or you might have a chance to win a fridge to win a hat to win a pass to the flipping fair itself for a year whatever it'll be something you'd, you'd get more out of the ticket than what you paid for it now a raffle means you get the opportunity to buy some shoes that are really expensive <laughs> and they that they purposely made in limited numbers to basically you know enforce some sort of artificial scarcity they don't need to sell these only in lv and auction these off they could just make enough to give to people to, to buy them in store as a great way to say virgil's legacy that he wanted everyone to rock these here's opportunity to do so here's the stores you can buy an iphone for again ps places is a good example yes all the resellers keep buying them up but they still do keep dropping yes you have to be quick to buy them but you still can get a console if you're smart enough or not smart if you've got the right connections and you've you know you've got the right bookmark save you can basically get a console if you want to, but you just have to, you know, have your kind of finger on a pulse. But with these, they drop once, and if you miss it, that's it. There's no other chance to get them again, unless you're going to go on StockX or go and pay exorbitant resale prices there or eBay. I I dread to think what these are going to go for, because already they're going on auction, this pair only that's going to be limited to Louis Vuitton customers. I would imagine, or VIP customers, it, I, I can't imagine what they're going to go for on eBay. I can't imagine. I can't imagine, but let's continue. Louis Vuitton will launch this eagerly awaited Air Force One sneaker designed by a col in collaboration with Nike in an auction to benefit the late designer Virgil Abloh scholarship fund for the black fashion students, marking the first of a string of related initiatives scheduled to take place this year. Amazing to see. All that money is going to go to a black scholarship fund for black fashion creators. It's awesome. To think as well, this came off the back of, if I'm not mistaken, that whole controversy regarding the, 50, the $5 or $50 uh, donation that he gave during the whole George Floyd protest. So I think so, if I'm not mistaken, the fund came off the back of that and now look it came it came in a moment of let's say quote unquote shame or controversy but it's now the legacy of that fund is going to be no one's going to remember that but everyone's going to remember the fact that he even set it up as a way to kind of answer back to his critics and basically prove that he's a good hearted dude because i still think it was a little bit ott the reaction but still he did it and now this fund is going to basically support and provide people you know that want to make a career in fashion or in a creative field with the opportunity to do so and they're going to go and impact many different people going on in, in the future it's just it's just amazing to see how that one fund is going to be able to touch so many people later on down the line it's amazing Abla who died of cancer in november at the age of 41 unveiled the shoes last january um last june so as part of his spring 22 in line for the french luxury house man he did so much in that last couple of years and r.i.p to the goat man all right, Peter, the go. Um, Vuitton plans to present his full 2022 collection, which Louis Vuitton chairman and chief executive officer Marco Burke said was 95% completed at the time of designers passing in two shows on Thursday as part of the Paris Fashion Week for the men's fashion collection. Okay, so that's the last show he's doing. So that show coming up is the last Virgil Design Louis Vuitton show. So I'm sure by then, or I, I'm sure already they've probably sounded out the person that they want to replace him. I'm not sure who it's going to be. I'm not sure if they're going to go for another black designer. Will they give it to a committee of people? Will it just go in-house? Will it just drop to somebody that worked beneath, underneath Virgil? I don't know. But I'm interested to see who it does um, going forward. Um, 200 pairs of limited edition Louis Vuitton and Nike Air Force One by Virgil Abloh sneakers will go on sale through Savabees.com with proceeds going to Virgil Abloh's Postmodern Scholarship Fund, which he launched in 2020 with the initial endowment of 1 million. Louis Vuitton, Nike and Savabees said on Wednesday in a joint statement provided exclusively to WWD. Man, it's mad, isn't it? He knew what he was going through at that time. Got all those pelters, still set up that fund. Oh, man. They don't make guys like that anymore, bro. Um, the sneakers and the online auction set to run from Jan 26th to Feb 8th will be made available in an exclusive colorway and a range of sizes from 5 to 18. They're making them to size 18 with bid start. I did, you know what usually happens? It's funny. When it comes to sneakers, I don't know if you guys know, but when it comes to reselling, usually you usually buy the sizes, from my experience, from size US 8 to sometimes US 12. Those are usually the, the sizes that sell the best, right? Um, and me being a US 10, I'm usually fine in terms of getting my size and also being able to move them on if I don't like them or to get a bit of money from Brooke. 
but usually the sizes that are the smallest in a five or three or whatever and the sizes are the biggest 13 plus they usually don't move because you know no one can shift them because you don't want that in your collection because it's too big and also not a lot of people are those sizes so they end up being far cheaper they end up being they end up selling for far less or being on sale for far less than the, the hot sizes are like for instance if i look at a mars yard that i've got now that i wear to the gym I'm sure my size is way more expensive than a size seven or size six because not many people are size or sizes. So I think it's going to be the actual opposite of this. I think if anything, those bigger sizes are going to be way, way more expensive because people are going to do, people are going to think no one's going to buy them. Everyone else is going to buy it because they just want them to have in a collection because this isn't, the sh this isn't, especially in, in the wake of Virgil's passing, this isn't just a sneaker anymore. It's a, it's basically a, a memento, right? It's basically a piece of history that you're owning. Um, something that probably won't happen again if you think about it, like Louis Vuitton, officially collaborating with nike especially in this freeway what in this freeway sort of deal i think they only would have done it with virgil because he was known um to be a basically a serial collaborator um he loved to basically you know uh, combine the high and the low so it made a lot more sense obviously he did really well with nike in terms of the nike 10 project so he earned a lot of kudos and a lot of kind of bargaining um chip points in that regard and i'm sure Virg the v louis vuitton people loved, loved him too so this made it easy i don't really see this collaboration happening too often um as much as it probably should do but yeah we continue Featuring the Vuitton signature monogram and Damia pants, uh, the Mia pattern, sorry, with natural cowhide piping. The actual, the limited edition ones that you can't get are flipping beautiful though, right? The piping, the actual Louis Vuitton leather. Um, these are probably going to feel amazing on. The only thing I'd say is that I remember last time, I, I don't know when it was, when I used to probably work at Nike, I got a pair of super, uh, yeah, I think I might got a pair of tier zero, Oh, sorry, tier one, the tier zero, tier, whatever that tier is, tier zero um, Air Force Ones that were made of really good leather. The only bad thing about them, because Air Force Ones are already heavy, these things were like bricks with the actual good leather on them, which is funny. So if you buy the ones from JD Sports, they, they kind of crease up really quickly, but you can wear them straight away. The ones that are actually made of good leather, they hurt your feet and they're really heavy. So keep that in mind if you're actually going to wear them which i doubt people are going to wear but i would if i got these i'd wear them every day just just as a tribute each pair will be sold with louis vuitton pilot case in monogram embossed leather with a 3d tag in orange um to coincide with the sale the shoes and the sneaker trunk which is also exclusive to auction will be exhibited in the lobby of subbies in new york and wednesday to feb 8th the event will proceed the commercial launch of the louis vuitton nike via virgil which will be available in limited quantities and exclusively through the louis vuitton store network the company said so you're not even going to get them if you're a fan of nike you can only get them if you're a Louis Vuitton fan or you're a customer there because I'm sure the first set will be sold to VIP customers, which I'm not that, I, I, I don't mind. I think that luxury um, fashion thing where they reward customers who spend a lot of money in their shop by giving them, you know, little coin pouches and and wallets and little handkerchiefs or maybe inviting them to a show. I think that's pretty cool. I love that because you don't get that from streetwear stores. Streetwear stores are notoriously tight. They probably won't even tell you something's dropping. Even if you spend, you know, a thousand pound every season, they probably won't tell you something's coming in. They'll still be sneaky and, you know, keep being secretive and all this malarkey. They, they don't really try and hook you up in, in any way, shape or form. I'm not asking for discounts. Just hook, 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 hook a man up. They won't do it. Whereas these luxury, luxury stores, which sell items far, you know, a far higher price point than streetwear stores do, are willing to give a guy a coin, you know, a coin holder, a belt, or whatever for spending loads of money in the shop or maybe give them the heads up oh yeah this new stuff's coming in if you guess you want it put your name down for this like little things like that they go a long way to do it. and again what does that do it just builds loyalty it builds trust um it builds a connection and people will just stick by you because you know you usually do right by them um but yeah streetwear streetwear people don't know that concept they just want to sell you expensive shit um that's made crappily but yeah we can we talk about that later um ablo the founder of luxury streetwear brand off-white and artistic director of men's where louis vuitton was involved in early organization of the auction and surrounding events wow the auction will take place in association with his family wow awesome well more good dude man um born in rockford the third guy named parents are both survived by his wife shannon his children low and gray his sister edwina and his parents knee and and eunice Herblow designed 47 pairs of drugs of the nrk von sneaker for the spring show bringing together the two biggest brands and partners vuitton said it plans to stage an exhibition for all the designs made a shoemaking workshop in italy which details to reveal to a later date oh so that's cool so we'll probably get to see loads of illustrations and text messages and whatsapp and whatnot of the design process 
Um, so it seems like not all the shoes are going to come out, the ones that we saw in the show. And when you're obviously still around, we're not going to see what those shoes um, actually brought to retail, unfortunately. I'm sure a lot of the Chinese factories are going to sell them anyway. So that should be good in terms of if you want to actually get a hold of them. Because I think as well, Virgil would, have, Virgil would have encouraged people to buy reps from flipping China anyway. Because he was all about allowing people to basically take, you know, his ideas and basically interpret them in their own way because he did the same thing with his brand. Um, so that would be quite cool to see people basically, you know, getting shoes from China and stuff and editing them and maybe marking them up and writing writing messages and shit and sharing them it'd be a great way to honor his legacy because those shoots will just live on you know uh, until the end of time especially like i said i don't think we're going to see a collaboration like this ever again in the notes of the collection revealed in the film called amen break the brand said the partnership was inspired by the cover of 1988 album it takes two by hip-hop duo rob bass and dj easy rock it shows easy rock wearing a nike force one basketball sneaker altered with the shoes adorned with an lv monogram the cover it says embodied the hip-hop community's early practice of hacking together high fashion and sportswear sidelining divergent brands with uh, equal reverence a cultural symbol in its own right today nike force one serves as an object the art embellic so it Emblem emblematic of self-generated subculture provenance um, provenance Vuitton said at the time to distinguish them from the original Air Force One the sneakers were made with materials employed in Vabla's Louis Vuitton collection were styled with with quote marks a signature off-white which is highly successful coverage with Nike in the style of uh, his auction features the word air written on sole and French word lacet on the laces and um, from Wednesday in the lead up of the auction select individuals who inspired Abloh and the coverage will receive pairs and exclusive colorways that will not be commercialized okay so everyone I've seen that's got the pair is people that he picked out to get them ahead of time which is nice because that's like a little last message that he's basically let these people like a little tome it's kind of essentially like a weird way to say it's sort of you kind of getting a, a, a an urn from him right and like a little okay cool his hand, i'll commemorate you so that's been pretty cool to see people getting those things and i'm sure people are quick to share them because they will want to show you know, i was his friend and i'm still you know i'm sure most of it is done with in earnest ways but still part of me is like yeah you're obviously going to show it off because you want everyone to know that you're a big wig in it big boy um today ablo has established a long-term partnership with fashion scholarship fund to launch a scholarship which was endowed with a personal donation the designer and matching funds from partners the um, evian farfetch louis vuitton and new gods group and nike it supports education and academical promising students of black african or uh, black sorry african-american and Arab african descent as a black designer he says I found my way through school and make sure of creative projects and I had to make a name for myself that I looked that that took a lot of years and a lot of meetings and a lot of runway shows a lot of work and I wanted to make the door open for younger generation to sort of have the pathway that stays open I was a student on a campus that was largely not diverse as the world is and it's important to set up these foundations specifically for black students who may feel like the industry of fashion they don't see many people that they can identify with Ablo said he named the fund postmodern because the receipts the recipient sorry would also have access to career support services and mentoring so yeah absolutely phenomenal stuff cannot wait to see in real life um yeah as this person said if you're not going to spend 100k a year if you haven't spent 100k a year at louis vuitton don't bother because for sure these are going to be made available to vip can um, clients which again i don't have an issue with i think it's quite cool that they have this option available for people i mean these stores that obviously spend a lot of money there's some obviously more pictures here of the shoe itself go away i don't look take away ad block but yeah they're absolutely beautiful you can tell that these are a level above regular air force ones you get even the air force ones you got from other collaborators like they really went crazy with the leather man like god damn this looks good really 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 good i love everything about it man so yeah so big up these shoes what's this video what's this one what's this? to all the ladies in the place which okay don't spend that because i'm gonna get ad blocked but yeah um, soon come obviously if you've got money and you want to go to Sotheby's and get them yourself do so but yeah for the rest of us we're probably never going to get a chance to own them retail okay, in my opinion I don't think it's going to happen so if you best bet to get them is obviously get get reps um, Virgil will be happy for you to buy a rep don't worry um, he was one that kind of wanted to empower people to basically have access to things that you know he probably never had access to coming up and also he wanted everybody to wear his thing so this is the best way to wear him in that regard but yeah r.i.p to the great virgil these look absolutely amazing cannot wait to see them adorned by the public when they do end up coming out